Hello, hello, hello! Marhay na aga, Katerismo! You want to know other cultural properties that can be considered to be part of the heritage sites here in the Philippines? Well, this video is suitable for you. The cultural properties mentioned in this video are all from Bicol Region. But before we proceed, let's have a short recap about the National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009, also known as the RA10066. This law aims to protect, preserve, conserve, and promote the nation's cultural heritage, its properties and histories, and the ethnicity of the local communities. It also aims to establish and strengthen cultural institutions and protect cultural workers and ensure the professional development and well-being. Just a disclaimer, this video is made for academic purposes only. The views and opinions expressed doesn't reflect the professor and the university. Credits to the pictures and background music used as well as to the authors of researchers cited for the benefits of others as well for the students to use them. Thank you! What are you waiting for? Just sit back, relax, and watch until the end of this video. You might not realize that you are learning. Without further ado, let's get started! Mabuhay! Good day everyone! I am Nina Maureen Similitante and I present to you St. Peter the Apostle Paris Church known to be the oldest church in the province of Vincennes Camarines Norte. Also named Parroquia de San Pedro Apostol built in 1611 by the Franciscan Friars. So it is a more than 400 year old church which was destroyed by calamities many times and ruined by fire last Christmas 2012. But they always rise again and maintain it to be the same image as it was before. It was strong enough that the coral stone walls, including the rafter and roofing, are still kept standing. Why should this church be part of the heritage sites? I will now give the floor to Miss Padilla to discuss why St. Peter the Apostle Paris Church should be considered to be part of the heritage sites here in the Philippines. Thank you, Miss Militante. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Patricia. I can say that the St. Peter the Apostle Paris Church can be part of the cultural heritage site here in the Philippines, especially in Bicol region. Because being the oldest church in the Camarines Norte, it showcases the rich and wealthy heritage of the province. Also, did you know that the age of this parish church is already more than 440 years old? And that is one of the elements that we need to consider to be part of heritage. The cultural property need to be older than 50 years. Second element that the St. Peter the Apostol Parish Church has the facility of it is intact in a way and not totally destroyed. But it is somehow renovated because the church was struck by fire in 2012 and was renovated and opened again on June 2015. Even though the inside of Parish Church is renovated but the appearance and historical artifacts of the parish church is maintained. And now, let's move on to another cultural property that will be discussed by Miss Ereño. Hi everyone, my name is Renee Arian R. Ereño. The next cultural property that is possible to be part of the heritage site is Bagatao Island Lighthouse. It is a historical lighthouse located in Bagatao Island on the eastern side of the entrance to Sorsogon Bay in the province of Sorsogon in the Philippines. The 29 feet quite cylindrical iron tower is situated on the rocky headland that forms the southern point in the western end of the island, giving a total light elevation of 135 feet. This has now become a tourist destination as the view from the lighthouse is scenic and spectacular seeing the wide expanse of the Bay of Sorsogon and some landforms covered with trees. Are you curious why is there a need to include this one? To know why Bagata Island Lighthouse can be one of the heritage sites in the Philippines, I will now call on Mr. Mendoza to discuss this one. Thank you very much, Mr. Renyo. Hello, I'm Andre Nicola Mendoza, and I will be discussing why the Bagatao Island Lighthouse is a great candidate for being a heritage site. The Bagatao Island Lighthouse can be considered as a part of the heritage sites in the Philippines because this property is a historical lighthouse and has been a guide for seafarers, particularly fishermen, as the weather in Bicol region, particularly in Sorsogon, changes at night. 
a place can be a heritage site as long as it has the qualities needed for it to be. The Bagatao Island Lighthouse has the potential of becoming a heritage site as it holds a great importance to many people. Seafarers use the lighthouse as a guide when it was still operating, which holds a special importance slash history for the many people of Sorsegol. Now, let's turn our attention to discussing the third and last cultural property here in Beagle region. Good day everyone, I'm Julia Maxine de Ate and welcome to the University of Nueva Caceres. This university is a private, non-sectarian university located in Naga City in Bicol, John. It was founded in 1948 by an exceptional Bicolano visionary, Dr. Jaime Hernandez. It is considered the oldest and the first university in Southern Luzon. The university is the Bicol's top choice university since it offers preschool, elementary, junior high school, senior high school, undergraduate, and graduate programs. In this university, there are notable alumni that are well known in our country. First is Luis G. Dato, who is one of the first Filipino Romantic poets of the 20th century. Second is Salvador Panelo, a Filipino lawyer who served as President Rodrigo Duterte's Chief Presidential Legal Counsel. Third is our 40th former Vice President of the Philippines, which is Lenny Robredo. Lastly, Noel Tiham, one of the Associate Justice of Supreme Court of the Philippines. I will now give the floor to Mr. De Lima to explain why the University of Nueva Caceres can be considered as part of the heritage site here in the Philippines. Thank you, Ms. Ate. My name is Ellen Noel De Lima. The University of Nueva Caceres can be considered as a part of heritage sites here in the Philippines for the reason that it was established in the early stages of development. The said university is actually one of the oldest and the first university in Southern Luzon. That alone shows the reputation and credentials. Preserving our history means giving importance to our past and culture because that's what molded us into who we are in the present. It is one of because few universities that offers a diverse range of undergraduate programs. That's why its potential to be a heritage site might give a huge help in protecting, preserving, conserving, and promoting it. And now, let's move on to Ms. Charles to explain why it's necessary for us to declare those three to be part of heritage protection. Thank you, Mr. Delima. So before I start, I want to introduce myself first. I am Michaela. I am your Catarismo. Heritage is what connects us. It includes our inherited traditions, monuments, objects, and culture. Most importantly, we derive a wide range of modern activities, meanings, and habits from historical figures. It is important to reawaken our heritage because it defines everyone as Filipinos and also guide us to better understand our identity. These are three examples of historical legacies deserving of our attention, protection, and preservation. It allows us to explore our history and traditions while also growing in self-awareness. Heritage protection has uh, many benefits including the preservation and celebration of beauty, source of our identity and pride. Now we have come to the end and we realize that there's a lot of cultural properties that we consider to be part of our heritage. It's not only their beauty, but the value of meeting at least one of the characteristics that will bring importance to the heritage. Ika nga nila na it's more fun in the Philippines. Kaya tayong mga Pilipino, katurismo, mahalagang pahalagahan, panatilihin, at pagyamanin ang mga ginintuang pamana sa atin. Thank you and goodbye. See you in our next video.